Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is the first day of summer vacation. I am so excited and I just snuck down here for a couple minutes to do a very quick watercolor tutorial inspired by the walk I took this morning with one of my daughters and my dog and I picked up, um, actually I picked these up in my own yard, some clover and some buttercups and I saw a lot of daisies out while I was walking. So I thought we could do a little uh, quick and easy composition with daisies, buttercups and clover. So I think I'm just going to do one daisy and I want you to start, I'll draw a little darker than I want you to so you can see it, but I'd like you to start by drawing an oval or an ellipse, um, kind of like, oh, just a little bit of left to center there, and then put a smaller oval in the middle, and that's going to be the yellow center, and then um, just like we're doing points on a compass, I want you to put some uh, oval, long oval petals around your daisy. Now see how they're shorter as they, as they approach the um, the thinner part of your circle, that's a perspective, and because if the flower's tipped away from you, you'll see it more like that. If, if you're facing it straight on, you would have more like a sun ray effect, kind of like that sunflower uh, tutorial we did a couple weeks ago, or a week or two ago, I don't know, whenever we did that. But um, so anyway, just go ahead and fill in with your petals. You don't really need one to look at for this, because we've all seen a bazillion daisies, but I do notice that once you start painting, um, I think you'll notice this, is that you will begin to really see things, instead of just really just looking at them, you'll really see them and observe, and um, that's very, you know, that's very important for a painter. And then I'm just going to throw in a, a stem. All right, and, and it wouldn't hurt to go through at this point, this is a brand new mechanical pencil, um, and just erased a little extra line, you know, that first ellipse line, you don't really need all of that, and I know some of you guys are bothered by the pencil marks, they don't bother me anymore, I actually think it's kind of like a roadmap to how I created the the piece, but if you don't like those pencil marks, you can go ahead and lighten them right now. All right, in the buttercups, we'll sketch on a few of those, and um, so these are kind of like circles if we look at them, and it helps if you have some in your yard and you can kind of turn them away. Like I love the way that looks from behind, so I think I'll put one up here from behind and start with that oval, and we can see the stem, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw that stem from the center, and we get these th these like five little, almost like a little star with these green, um, so those green little bits there, and then we've got these big saucery type petals, and then just put those big saucery petals in like that. See how easy that is, and you know, so that's the nice thing about working from life, and then you can throw a couple little buds on there if you want to, and a lot of times I'll just kind of make it up as I go, and we put a couple down here that are more like facing us, or facing off to the edge a little bit. So take your time in the composition and it's going to make the painting a snap. And these uh, petals pretty much fill out, fill the entire circle so you don't have to worry about, um, about uh, you know, erasing too much afterwards. And then the others will be clover and we're going to paint those in. I'll just put in a few little stems for my clover because I just want to paint that in and, and I'll show you how to do that without drawing it. It's very, very easy. Maybe we could just throw, I don't even think we need to paint the leaves. We'll just, we'll just, uh, we'll just go along like that. Okay, so we have our composition and um, if you want to put a background in, uh, we're not going to do a background. We're just going to keep it nice and easy. I want to work with a number six round or so. I think that's what we got here or five rounds, something like that. I think that'll do the uh, that will work for everything we're going to paint here, and um, let's start with our stems and a little uh, sap green or hook hooker's green, whatever you have. This is hooker's green, and I feel like it's a little too dark, and I'm going to warm it up with a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's get a little bit of that in there. That will give me a nice earthy color, and um, I'm working on dry paper with a fully loaded brush, and I'm just going to pull down my stems. I had a very um, fabulous cup of coffee. Okay, a couple. Okay, you know the size of my coffee cups, right? So I had two of those coffee bowls this morning, and I think my hands are a little shaky. <laughs> oh my goodness. So hopefully your lines will be a little bit steadier than mine. And I'm just going to kind of throw in the little bit of a uh, kind of, I don't know what you call them, those little, it's like those little star things that are on the back of this flower here. But um, they kind of wrap up around the little butter buttercup buds that we have. And then I'm going to go right in with some uh, cadmium yellow. I just kind of tap it off on my palette and make sure I don't have any lumps, and I'm just going to go put that right in the buds and let them blend. 
All right. And then I think I will go right to the middle of my daisy. I, should, I didn't need to wash my brush. I don't know why I did. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put in this nice yellow. And then I think just to add a little bit of contrast, I'm going to go in with a little bit of yellow ochre uh, in the center there, or off to the edge somewhere, just to give it a little bit of an extra texture, extra texture, make it a little bit fancier. All right, now we're going to um, paint our little clover and we're going to need some purple. And if you have purple, you can use it. And if not, mix ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. I'm going to use the purple and then I'm also going to use some of this uh, nice rose color that I have on my palette because it's just kind of kind of pretty. I like to sometimes change my palettes that I'm using because I do have several because uh, I've been painting for a long time. And uh, and then this is great. You want to load up your brush with your lighter color and then uh, where you want your clover, you're just going to tap and let the let the um, you let your brush do all the work. You just kind of tap it in tap 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 your, your brush is pointing to the top of the flower and I just love the way the colors mix and mingle and just get that beautiful um, clovery look that's the thing about wildflower flowers you have this very um, you have a very nice light splashy look that is so well represented in watercolor and I've got I've got a little extra over there so I may end up uh, turning that into a bug or uh, making another clover over there. I feel like I want another one too because I just really like to make them so I think I'll put one up here. Tap 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 and then go in with your slightly darker shade and tap 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 on the bottom. All right and then before it dries use the end of your brush or credit card scraper and just scratch in some of the like, little textures, the little individual petals, just some lines and it's just going to hint at it. I think it's nice to have like a little book of watercolor postcards or maybe make a little journal with some of your favorite watercolor paper and uh, keep a little palette of colors with you and then you can be, you know, have it in the car or in your purse and be ready to capture wildflowers or whatever you see throughout the summer. And I'm going to go back in with some of that green. I'm going to take the hooker's green. This time I'm going to add some of the cadmium yellow to it so I get a nice springier green and I'm going to add that to my clover and just kind of follow my uh, petals down and then I want to paint. I'm actually going to add um, the uh, petals. They should be more hookers green. They're a little darker. I'm just going to press and lift and twist, press and lift and twist, press and lift and twist and just kind of throw, um, throw my petals in like that. Just make sure you have plenty of paint on there. This is not, uh, this brush I think has been used for things other than watercolor because it's not behaving quite as I would like, but that's all right. I throw another couple of little groups of leaves, maybe from behind there. All right, now I'm going to paint the buttercup. So I'm just going to use a cadmium yellow and uh, just go ahead and color, fill those leaves in. And you can always go back in after you have, um, after your paint is dried and go in with a soft white eraser and you can remove a lot of the lines too if they bother you. Or you could sketch it all in with um, watercolor pencils and then you could, you know, they, they'll dissolve as you go. I'm use a little bit of a uh, yellow ochre in the center. Just kind of tap some in and then just tap in a tiny little bit of green in there, just on the one that's facing us. A little bit more of that yellow on the edges though. It seems to be a little pale. Let it do its thing. Now for the um, daisy, I'm actually going to water down some of that purpley color. And I think I'm going to use a little ultramarine blue. I'm just making some pale shades. I can do the ultramarine blue. Let's do that up here where you can see it. Ultramarine blue and a little yellow ochre. And that will give me kind of a grayish color that I can work with. Oops, I just picked up some green. Let's wipe that out and try that again. All right, we're going to do a little ultramarine and yellow ochre. Probably confused you except with the yellow ochre first. And it does have a little bit of a green bias, but it's, um, it's mainly the ultramarine. All right, so between that and a little bit of um, watered down purpley color, 
and we could even do some of that purple with the ultramarine blue. We'll have some nice colors too, because it's hard to paint white things and make them still look white, then that's what we're going to do here. Okay, and have a napkin handy so that you can blot your brush so you don't get too much color. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit of that. Um, I'm going to stick my finger in the purple there. Pick up a little bit of that. I'm going to change this brush. This brush is like, it feels like I've <laughs> painted on sandpaper or something with it. It's really unwieldy. I think I was using that for ink and acrylics or something. Um, I'm just going in with a little bit of that gray on the petals in the back and take as much time as you want with it. I'm just doing a very quick, easy breezy, but you can do it however you want. This is just a green card. I'm not going to worry about it. And then I'm just going to pick up some of this other color. See, I blot it so I don't get a charge it with too much color and just kind of go throw it in some of these other petals. I'm just kind of defining it like I'm putting in the shadows. A little bit more with a little bit of the pink. And, you know, blot it if you need to. Don't feel like, you know, it's there and it's permanent. And blot it off if you need to. You can press your napkin right against the paper. Nothing's that permanent here. Especially these Canton watercolor cards, they have a good amount of sizing. I think they're all, uh, I don't think there's any cotton in them. I think they're all paper pulp and they are heavily sized so you can get rid of mistakes. Now I do want to warm it up a little bit so I'm going to do a little watery yellow ochre on its own. See how very, very pale washes here. And I'm going to throw a little bit here and there just to show the light hitting it. All right, so there we have a very easy painting. Of course, I never think it's quite done until I splatter on some colors. And I will, I'm going to need a juicy brush for that. I have my, uh, my, <laughs> my desk is all discombobulated today. Um, so I'm going to use some of that. Uh, Mauve, some of that um, red. I'm going to splash some of that on there. Then I'm going to grab some more of that purple. And do some of that green. Mix it right in there with that yellow on my palette. And I can blot anywhere where I feel it's a little too much. And then I can just sign my name or my initials with a decent brush. <laughs> than the one that I was trying to paint with. I'll just put my initials down here in the corner. LMW14. And um, there you have it. A very quick and easy painting that I do hope you try soon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful summer vacation. I'll be back with daily quick and easy tutorials. So please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any more of them. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.